Now we will begin our uh, worship service by call to worship, reading call to worship responsibly. Uh, it's in uh, your sheet. The bold letters are yours. Cool. The earth is the Lord's, everything in creation belongs to God. Lift, Lift up, up your eyes, eyes. See, see the, the mighty, mighty works of the Lord. Lord. This is the Lord's house. All who hope in the Lord will be called the children of God. Lift, Lift up, up your hearts, receive, receive the, the gracious gifts of the Lord. This is the hour for worship and song. Lift up your, your voice, voice. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord with all with your, might. your might. Thank you. Um, before we uh, uh, sing a new song, I'd like to invite the children, uh, Edmund and Spencer. Juliet. Could you please come up here and then um, share your holiday story? Uh, how are you doing? This is the school holidays. <laughs> is it okay? Or later? Maybe later? <laughs> okay. Well, you can share it later, but uh, can you reach it here? So what have you been doing so far at the school holidays? Wait for the kids. Bye-bye. What? <laughs> what? Lego. 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 Oh, Lego. Bricks for kids. <laughs> ah, bricks for kids. Ah, yes, yes, yes. But um, we'd like to uh, hear uh, more elaboration later in our <laughs> new sense notices time. Now. Without even technology, uh, without even uh, beautiful pictures. And this is a new song. And we are learning um, through the recording. And the words are in, in your order of service. So we prepared for beautiful kind of uh, YouTube video even but it's not possible. Okay, here you go. Here it is. <clears throat> so, no worries, you don't know the song, but just to, um, kind of, in silence, just read it through, or you may kind of um, um, shadow singing. Please stand.
led astray. Lord of the dance, creator of whirling winds and shimmering flames, move in as they say. Breathe life into our songs of praise. Set our hearts ablaze to your woes. May our worship, may our worship bring joy to you. Gracious God, you have called us by name and made us your family. Yet we do not always live as one body in Christ. We neglect to care for your creation. We forget that our neighbor is also our sister or brother. <coughs> We ignore suffering children in lands far away. Forgive us, we pray. Loosen the chains we place on our lives. Chains of burden and dizziness. Chains of ignorance and stress. Free us to care for your family. May we, we all might dance, sing, and praise your glorious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we have another song, right? Another song? Gentle God? We have sung it before, uh, but. Um, People might not remember, but um, please stand. And singers, please come forward. We practiced it. We are singers. Okay. Please stand. from Mark 6, verses 14 
to 29. The death of John the Baptist. King Herod heard of it for Jesus' name and became known. Some were saying John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah. And others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She re replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Mary. That's a wonderful reading. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to know your ways. Teach us your path. Lead us in your truth. And teach us, for you are the God of our salvation. For you, we wait all day long. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Who kill a mocking bird? Do you know the novel? Yes? Yes? <laughs> we kind of high school students learn, right? <laughs> and at some stage, I noticed my daughter was studying very hard to analyze characters and plot and things like that. Quite a famous book written by uh, American writer Harper Lee. As you know, I borrowed the sermon's title from a novel, Who Killed a Mockingbird. The writer, Lee, portrays how a person's skin color can make their testimony 
either true or false. Here, the mockingbird symbolizes innocence or harmlessness. The setting was in the mid-1930s, Alabama, the southern states of America. Although slavery had been abolished in 1890, it didn't bring much change to the way may, um, many white people felt about black people. In today's reading, we'll see another symbolism of the death of innocence when John the Baptist was killed. In his case, it's more like a canary in a coal mine, as his death signals Jesus about an imminent danger in his ministry. Many years ago, I saw a canary not in a coal mine, but in one of the underground tunnels close to DMZ, demilitarized zone in South Korea. It was made by North Korea so that they could use the tunnel to infiltrate South Korea. Canaries were used to save people's lives in coal mines or underground tunnels, but not any anymore. In 1980s, um, the government, I, I guess the New Zealand government has put uh, it. We, we, we may use more kind of technological the, um, advanced device. The death of John the Baptist is placed between the commission, commission of the disciples, and the return of the two disciples, twelve disciples. So commission and returning of the disciples in Dutin, John the Baptist. The story of John and Herod foreshadows Jesus' death at the hands of a political figure. John's death also means the end of innocence for Jesus' ministry. The sign had already begun when Jesus was rejected in his own hometown in Mark 6, 1 to 6. Now we see that the John's message not only met with political obstacles, but so with Jesus' message and his followers. Jesus may have known John's declaration of the unlawfulness of Herod's marriage to Herodias when he said about unlawful divorce. So Jesus knew, obviously, about the incident. The, uh, the quote is like, goes like this, Mark 10, 10. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. That was what Jesus said. From the reading of Mark, we see Herod's views of the Jesus moment. Unlike others who thought Jesus was a prophet, Herod thought Jesus was John, raised from death. Associating, associating Jesus' continual activity with John's. Through Mark, we understand that the cause of John's death was Herodias' grudge against John. And also we learn about first century culture. It's not biblical culture, but first century Greco-Roman culture. According to Josephus, a Jewish historian, John's death was entirely due to Herod because of the unlawful marriage with Herodias based on Mosaic law. Mosaic law means five uh, scriptures, uh, 
begin, begins with a Genesis. Leviticus 18 and 20 prohibits relationships with close relatives such as mother, stepmother, sister, etc. Et so it is interesting, there is no mention about uh, male part. And from male perspectives, uh, mother, stepmother, sister, it's prohibited. Herodias was the wife of his half-brother. So obviously, it violated the law. The reasons uh, for prohibitions were to maintain the purity and holiness of the Israeli people and to distinguish them from other nations. Further, violations of these prohibitions may have included penalties such as excommunication or death. However, marriages with more distant relatives were generally permitted such as between cousins. So Israelis tried to maintain familial and societal boundaries within the context of marriage. And this kind of prohibitions, similar to Confucian culture and kind of East Asian culture, so the kind of similar law. And from this reading, Mark, <coughs> we have identified a few things. First, a truth, a truth, has its consequences. Although King Herod feared John, knowing he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him, but he couldn't have let John continue to criticize his marriage. Thereby, he the honor as king. In this case, we see both things can be true. One is Herod's unlawful marriage, thereby John's criticism of it. That's a fact. The other is Herod's greed to save his face in the first century Greco-Roman world. The honor-shame culture was a fundamental social framework. It influenced individuals' behaviors and relationships. Among many aspects, family reputation was paramount. One family member's actions could enhance or diminish the family's honor. So maintaining family honor was a collective responsibility. John's criticism had to meet its consequences to protect Herod's honor. But was it entirely Herod and his honor? Was the community free from John's death? That was my question. For instance, in To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus Finch, the lawyer, we've got a lawyer here, <laughs> who, um, who um, kind of defended Tom, the black person, was openly criticized by Bob Ewer, the father of the woman allegedly raped by Tom. Later, Bob even planned to lynch the children of Atticus. But the community didn't do much. They were just the passive observers. <clears throat> Back to Herod, <clears throat> by killing John, Herod's shame worsened, and the community may not be entirely free from it. Second, truth doesn't necessarily make people make the right decisions. People are easily swayed by greed, fear, or something else. Herod liked to listen to John, but was perplexed because he didn't understand him. 
This perplexity continued until he ordered the execution of John. He didn't want to kill John, but he didn't want to lose his honor either. Innocence, in this case, must be eliminated. What would we do if we were Herod's guest and sitting there? Would we ask Herod to keep his words or to condemn him for making such a reckless promise so quickly or what? Similarly, in Mark 15, 1 to 5, 1 to 15, Pilate was forced to make a decision. He acknowledged Jesus' innocence, but wishing to satisfy the crowd, he conceded and ordered Jesus' execution. However, from both decisions, we can find one common element. They wished to save their face or their honor before people, which was more important than someone's innocence. <coughs> Third, if it is connected to God's truth, a buried truth continues to live regardless of a person's death. After John was executed, his disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The truth of John seemed to be buried too. In verse 30, which is not included in today's reading, Mark continues his report with Jesus feeding the 5,000 without any explanation. Unlike Mark, Matthew 14, 12, 13 reads, his disciples, that's John's disciples, his disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And the feeding the 5,000 narrative begins. John's unfinished work to tell the truth of God continues through his cousin, Jesus. If we see God's truth as Jesus' new commandment, love one another, for example, make it simple, it may be help, helpful to see when we recognize things that wouldn't belong to the truth. That's how we recognize. I recently watched a documentary by Deutsche Welle, German Wave. It is the German public state-owned international broadcaster, like a BBC in England. The documentary title was The Chinese Letter, A Chinese Prisoner's SOS. The story begins with a pregnancy test package purchased in a Paris pharmacy. Filmmaker Leticia Moro, Moro, <laughs> maybe my pronunciation is wrong, found a handwritten letter from a political prisoner inside the package. The letter describes the first labor he was doing, he or she was doing, and the prison where the test was manufactured. The letter begins like this. Dear friends, do you know that Chinese prisoners in Tianjin 
have to work 12 to 15 hours a day and don't even get a meal in return so that you can have a comfortable life. He concludes with the words, please help me. The documentary shows how the investigation, for example, whether the letter is, was genuine or not from that point, starting from a handwritten letter by a Chinese prisoner, which um, eventually reached the European Parliament, which approved an EU-wide ban on products produced with forced labor on 24th April 2024, this year, a few months ago. The regulation will prohibit the sale, import, and export of goods made using forced labor. A seemingly simple and harmless package of the pregnancy test reveals international political and economic greed and embedded fear and hope to change. Small things matter, and a truth is no exception. In any case, we are all responsible for protecting what we cherish. We thought about the death of John the Baptist through the theme of to kill a mockingbird where innocence or harmless truth can be killed by greed and fear. The truth we, we uphold, love one another, seems fragile like a mockingbird or a canary in a coal mine. Our indifference, busyness, individualism and selfishness may allow us to kill the fragile truth directly or indirectly. But if the truth dies, we may be sure that our death is imminent too. May God help us Continue to live by the truth. Amen. Mm. We have a moment of silence and musicians will play something for us. Thank you. and ourselves and I'd like to invite Gary. He will pray for us. Thank you. Shall we pray? Lord, this day we come united. We pray that we may be refreshed, reminded of your word which strengthens us. Lord, your word is permanently within our lives, and we ask, Lord, that we take the time to share this word. Lord, your word is enriching to all of us. 
Lord, you know our needs before we even pray. We thank you, Lord, for this. We bring before you our needs and our concerns. May your spirit touch people in times of trouble this day. Create in us, Lord, the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and gentleness. Encourage the many who preach your word today, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you for them and their envisaging our lives. Thank you for the health sector, attempting to be of encouragement to those in ill health this day. We ask your strength for many who need to be healed at this time. Be with many peacekeepers among the nations. Come among them, we pray, and bring peace among the nations. We pray for all our committees at this time as we prepare for next term. May we be refreshed and eager, ready to embrace your calling. Surround all those who are ill at this time, Lord, we pray. We pray for those we know especially at this time now. Pray for many undergoing operations. Be close to them, we pray. Enrich them and be with their families. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance of you, what you provide all, for everybody. Bless and thanks be to your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> together through God who sent our gifts the gifts of our lives our souls and our treasure multiply and bless these gifts and consecrate them to the praise of your glory Amen Please be seated Thank you I put um in, in my slide, I put the, uh, the a photo uh, taken by the um, fire brigade before the big fire truck, <laughs> fire engine, when um, uh, we delivered that uh, pajamas. So I was really proud of it, and I was about to show it here, <laughs> but nothing. <laughs> but it's it's here, and a huge thank. Uh, they. Um, they, uh, we are, uh, on, in our Facebook, we are only one church who participated in this pajama collection uh, alongside um, uh, two schools, etc. So not many communities. So they were so, so kind of um, thankful for that. And I asked uh, where all these items would go and then they uh, told me um, to, to middle more ask you that. Yeah, so that was safely delivered. And next Sunday is a community breakfast. Uh, please, uh, Kathy will talk about community breakfast and repair cafe too. So next Sunday is the breakfast. If you could all, um, if you're coming, bring a small contribution to eat. We have Lisa Trust, Trist, 
from the ASB um, Bank. She's a community banker and she's going to talk about financial scams and fraud. Um, so it would be worth coming to hear her. Um, we just need a volunteer to go on the front door. We can welcome people, especially anyone new, um, and if they are new, to actually bring them down to the other door. Um, that would be helpful. Um, and if anyone wants to volunteer on the kitchen, we do have two stalwarts who always do it, but if anyone else wants to help, that would be great. Um, and then the week after is the Repair Cafe. Um, Rachel's asked me to tell you about this on the 27th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, from 10.30 to 1pm, so it's a bit later than normal, and um, the usual great occasion with the community coming in, and um, if you do, uh, if you are able to help, the best thing would be to bring a little plate of food, even if you want to just drop it off and go, that would be great um, for the morning tea, um, some, some finger food. Um, Um, thanks to those who brought back their washing. Mm -hmm. A reminder to anyone else. Thanks. Um, well, children, do you, would you like to share something? What have you been doing so far? <laughs> <laughs> and after the children, um, I will invite um, um, Barbara about the uh, this lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay, please come. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Just yeah. your presence yeah. lifts our souls. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Juliet yeah. oh, would like to show. Juliet would just like to show what she's been doing this morning. If yeah. you hold that up, Juliet. <laughs> Juliet has drawn a very coloured in a very huggable dinosaur. <laughs> okay. And then beautiful. she's drawn some of, of God's beautiful nature um, <coughs> in the tree. And what are the animals we can see in the tree, Juliet? Owl. An owl, a snake, ants, ants and birds. Beautiful. Similar to <laughs> Gruffalo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Similar to Gruffalo story. Picture. Thank you. And this is just a forward uh, date for your diaries. We had our pastoral team committee last Tuesday and it was suggested that we have another parish lunch. And so I've been in touch with the chef at RSA and the date we hoped to get, which is convenient, it's Friday the 23rd of August. So it seems a long way away, but it soon will be upon us. And we'll have more notices and flyers um, next week onwards. This is just to say it is going to happen. A pastoral um, lunch for anybody, friends and neighbours, they can come through. And the cost will be um, still $20 each. And then we can have that in the restaurant at the RSA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Do we have any birthdays this week? No birthdays? Oh, Helene. No, Grace has a birthday on Friday. Grace. Ah, Grace is away uh, like a, just a Friday. Oh, thank you for uh, sharing the card. Uh, last Friday. Uh, okay, anything else? Ah, one last thing is that not uh, this month, but 2nd of August here, 2nd of August is Friday. Uh, we are having the very popular uh, justice compassion workshop, building compassionate communities workshop will be here uh, from 1 to 3, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, after that, uh, kind of light uh, afternoon tea, so light refreshment. So it's a free, uh, but please register. Uh, when you uh, look Look up the uh, the weekly top up. You, there's a kind of you can press that button, then it will lead to the website, Humanitex, and then you can uh, register there. Uh, can that, I can say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, 
Um, this workshop is Ivan Yeo from Asian Family Services, and he's talking, um, he does workshops for people who are working with migrant people, but you don't have to be working with migrant people to go to his workshop. They're really interesting and um, lots of fun. He's a fantastic presenter, and you can learn a lot about um, just being in a multicultural community from, from him, so I highly recommend going to it. Yeah. And the humanities, it's free, but you just register so they know that you're coming and how many people there are. Um, coming, and if you can't do it, let one of us know because we can register you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, now our last hymn is Now As We Go. It's the, uh, the melody we heard uh, during our reflection time. So, oh, 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 pet, oh my applause. <laughs> I've got some news that some of you may not know about, and we've only learned ourselves this morning. While we've been away, we've been on the list of Rosemary and David's um, daily blog, and I think it's David mostly who's been doing it, and putting um, photos up galore on all of the things that they see as, have seen as they've been doing their pilgrimage from Burgos to Santiago, um, which I think has probably been about towards 400 kilometers. And um, the small, as we've been reading it, it's been wonderful to us because we've been reliving our pilgrimage, which the first one was 2001, and so we've really been with them in spirit. Well, this morning, Colin said to me, look at this photo. And here was a photo of um, Rosemary, um, and they'd arrived in Santiago, and her face was just full of joy. <laughs> it was just glorious to see it. And there were also a few photos of them outside the cathedral, but at a distance, showing the enormous nice. Santiago Cathedral. So um, we can all give thanks that they have achieved their pilgrimage and I'm sure they've gained so much about it from it and that we'll hear about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Now we will sing, now as we go, please stand. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. 